Reductive amination is a two-step method for turning ketones and aldehydes into amines. In the example shown at the top here, cyclohexanone is being treated with methylamine and under the right conditions, typically uh, pH 4.0, we can form an imine. Uh, and that mechanism we've already discussed. Once we do form the imine, that pi bond can then be reduced and we can get an amine as our final product. Uh, that reduction uh, can happen a number of different ways. Hydrogenation is one method. Treat with hydrogen gas and some transition metal catalyst. Uh, nickel is shown here, but others are possible like palladium, platinum, ruthenium. Um, or more commonly, we can reduce the imine carbon-nitrogen double bond to the single bond with sodium borohydride. And a close variant of sodium borohydride is sodium cyanoborohydride. Both of them affect the same reaction. The mechanism for sodium borohydride reduction of imines is very close to the mechanism for sodium borohydride reduction of ketones and aldehydes. In the second example down below, we're again starting with cyclohexanone, and this time we're treating with a secondary amine, a nitrogen with two bonds to carbon. In this case, the intermediate is an aminium ion. That nitrogen does not have a hydrogen that we can remove to get to a neutral imine. Normally, if these were the only conditions, we would continue to form the ene amine. We would actually deprotonate the beta carbon here and then form a carbon-carbon double bond, breaking the pi bond to the nitrogen to give me the amine. But if we quickly treat this aminium ion uh, with reductive conditions, we can reduce the aminium ion again to an amine. The amino acid L-proline is biosynthesized through imine formation, followed by a reduction of that imine to an amine. In this sequence, you can see we start with the amino acid L-glutamate. The carboxylic acid group is phosphorylated. That gives us a phosphate ester. And then through a mechanism that we'll talk about later in the course, this phosphate ester is reduced to an aldehyde. And now we can do an intramolecular cyclization to form an imine or iminium ion. In this case, we'd be forming a bond between the nitrogen here and the carbonyl carbon here, right? using the same mechanism we've seen before. So once that imine or aminium ion is formed, which we see right here, then that pi bond can again be reduced to a single bond. Um, in the lab, we would do that with sodium borohydride or sodium cyanoborohydride or hydrogenation. Um, in biosynthesis, in biological organisms, that's typically done with NADH or NADPH um, to give us L-proline. All right, let's end with a synthesis question. Um, we have to construct an amine and it looks like our starting material is also an amine. So this is a good clue that reductive amination um, could be at play here because we're gonna have to create a new carbon-nitrogen bond. And if we look at the starting material closely, it looks like that this is the new CN bond that we have to make, the one that I've highlighted in blue. All right, so let's start with our retrosynthesis. Let me get rid of these marks. And again, in a retrosynthesis, we're thinking backwards by starting from the end, right? It would be very difficult, especially for this problem, to, to guess our way to the end by starting at the beginning. Um, that would take a lot of trial and error. So I'm actually gonna start at the end. And when I look at this molecule, it may look complex, but again, what I'm thinking about is how am I gonna make that carbon-nitrogen single bond there? Well, I'm immediately thinking reductive amination, right? And the last step in reductive amination is reducing the imine to the amine. So what would that imine look like? I'm gonna leave everything else the same in the molecule. But now instead of a carbon-nitrogen single bond, I probably got that from 
the carbon-nitrogen double bond. Okay, so there's my imine, right? And I won't worry about the conditions yet, about how to reduce the imine to the amine. I just want to get my strategy outlined first in case I want to make changes. All right, the imine, then I can get from two pieces, right? The ketone or aldehyde and the amine, right? So I'm going to form that carbon-nitrogen double bond right here through the condensation of an amine. And that is going to look like this, cyclopentylamine. And right, there's already a hydrogen here. So my other piece is going to be that carbon with a double bond to oxygen, in this case, an aldehyde. And so there is my aldehyde carbon. And the rest of the molecule stays the same. All right, so condensation of those two should give me the imine. All right, now how do I make the aldehyde, right? I can start with that amine. Now I've got to make this aldehyde somehow. And to form new carbon bonds to benzene rings, I need friedel crafts type of chemistry. Um, and one, one method that I know to easily form four carbon chains to a benzene ring is by the friedel crafts acylation of succinic anhydride. Whoops. And treat with a Lewis acid. All right, and when I do that, I get this molecule here. And you can see I have a benzylic ketone. And I also have a terminal, well, it has to be terminal, but a carboxylic acid group at the end of that chain. And so all I need to do then to get to that aldehyde is somehow reduce the benzylic ketone and then eventually turn the carboxylic acid group into an aldehyde. And I can do that in pretty short order. Right, we've already talked about how to reduce benzylic ketones, either with the Wolf-Kishner reduction or with a Clemenson reduction. So I'll do Wolf-Kishner. That's with hydrazine and some strong base. I'll just use potassium hydroxide. And again, that's only going to reduce the benzylic carbonyl group, the one attached to benzene to give me a methylene group, the carboxylic acid group is untouched. Almost out of room here. All right, now there's no direct methods that we know of to go from a carboxylic acid to an aldehyde, but perhaps through a two-step process we can get there. So I could reduce the carboxylic acid to a primary alcohol first, and then re-oxidize that primary alcohol to the aldehyde. All right, so since I've run out of room, I'm gonna do that in one arrow. Okay, so the first step would be a lithium aluminum hydride reduction. All right, and whenever I do these hydride reductions, I always have to add water and acid at the end. And then followed by reoxidation, right? Oxidize the primary alcohol that I'd get up to the aldehyde. Um, and there's a number of methods that I know. Um, Des Martin per iodinane uh, oxidation. We've got Swern oxidation, PCC and PDC oxidation. All of those would work. All right. Um, I'm going to go with the easy route and just write DMP. All right. That would give me the aldehyde. And that completes my synthesis. Now what I need to do is put the conditions in. Um, I've got the conditions here. Right? I actually did this part. But what about the other steps? 
and I did the conditions here and here. How do I do the condensation? Well, really, all I have to do is mix the amine and the aldehyde together. Right? And typically, I want to ensure that I have a pH around 4.0. So I'd add some buffer. Right? I, I, I want a pH that's acidic enough that we can activate the carbonyl towards addition, but not too basic or not too acidic so that we protonate the amine and make it non-nucleophilic. All right, and then again, to reduce the imine to the amine, I've got a couple of choices. The easiest would be sodium borohydride. And that completes my synthesis.